Hi folks, Rob Harris here. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick lesson on the guitar part that I did for the song Love Philosophy by Jamiroquai. Um, I did this song, it was on the first album I played with the band um, quite a long time ago, back in 99, 2000, I think it was. Uh, but it's a, a very sort of popular track that the band plays. Um, and I actually really enjoy the guitar part. I, you know, I'll, and I'll just take you through how I came up with the, uh, the parts and my thinking behind the chords that I use. Um, as you heard, I've just played it along to a backing track. I will make the track available to anyone who'd like to download it. Um, just hit the link below in the description um, to my email and I'll get it sent out to you. So let's move on to the parts. Now, um, there are three, basically, I see, I see this song has got three guitar parts. Um, there's a verse part, which is the main riff, and then there's an overdubbed part that I did, um, which is a picky thing, um, and then there's the chorus section. So we'll just take this a bit at a time. So the first of all, let's talk about the chords of the song. In the verse, the chords go, uh, played by the Fender Rhodes, they go B minor seven, E minor seven, C six nine, back to B minor seven. So if I count it through, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, like that. Now, what I did, um, at the time, there were a lot of tracks on the radio that were using samples of songs. So I tried to come up with a guitar part that sounded like it was it was ripped off another record um, rather than sampling it and paying a fortune for the, for the sample. I just thought I'd try and come up with something hooky that sounded like it was taken off a, you know, a chic song or, you know, or something else, an, an old disco track. So I, I wrote this part um, and... I've spoken about this before, but I, I make the chords as small as I possibly can because there's a lot going on. There's a, there's the drums, there's the vocal, there's a quite a, a, a busy bass line, and then the chords are being played by a Fender Rhodes. So what I do is I just take two notes from the chord and I make, um, so for example, the, the B minor seven, I'm just fretting the seventh fret of the G and the B string here. I get my minor third there, which is on the seventh fret of the G, and then I've got my fifth on the seventh fret of the B. So that's what I play for the B minor chord, the B minor seven chord. Um, and that's enough for that. For the E minor seven, um, well, all I'm doing is I'm putting my second finger on the eighth fret of the B string. So I keep my first finger where it is, and go to the eighth fret of the B string. And what I'm getting there, is I'm getting my flattened seventh for my E minor seven, and I'm getting my minor third there on the eighth fret of the B string. So that is the voicing for the E minor seven chord. And then, super cool, because it's a C6-9, I don't move that at all. I just keep that in the same shape. So I'm using that for the B minor seven, that for the E minor seven, that for the C6-9, and then back to that for the B minor seven, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna talk about the strumming pattern. If I play, I'll play it really slowly and uh, I'll explain what I'm doing rhythmically with my right hand and my left hand. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Most of you might be able to pick up that, what I'm doing anyway there, but I'll ex I'll try and explain it. Um, it's actually harder to explain than it is to play, <laughs> so uh, bear with me. Um, what I'm doing, if, if, I'm, if I'm strumming at one and two and three and four and like that, the very first event that I hear is it, it's, uh, it's on the quaver, the, the eighth note before the first bar. So I get this one and two and three and four and like that, okay? One and two and three and four and. And you notice I'm sliding down from the sixth fret 
or sliding up from the sixth fret to the seventh fret. One and two and three and four and like that. Okay. Then I miss the downstroke on the one, and then I get the one e and a. Uh. So I get one and two and three and four and e and a uh, like that. Again slowly. One, two and three and four and. And then I get uh, two and as well. So I go three and four and one E and two and like that. And then uh, the next event is three E and a. Uh. So it's three E and a uh, like that. So I get one and two and three and four. As you can see, I'm hitting, you can hear, um, I've spoken about this before, but um, I'm strumming the strings. I'm, I'm kind of concentrating my pick on the G, B, and E strings here. I'm not hearing anything on the E string. And the way my finger is, um, basically I'm arching my first finger. So the pad of my first finger there is playing the B and the G string, and then it arches out to mute the high E string. You can see the rest of my hand is muting the strings of um, the rest of my fingers on my fretting hand are muting the strings below. So I don't get any ringing notes um, because of the, the guitar vibrating. You can hear I'm just pressing the chord down, the two notes down when I wanna hear, when I wanna make a sound. You can see my finger is bouncing three and four and like that. That's the rhythm basically. And then all I'm doing is I'm changing the chords. So I get this one, two, three, and four, and one. Now I'm going to take a look at the second part of the verse. Um, I put a, a, another little picking line, a little bubbly picking line in at the second half of the verses, just to, just so that the track grows and sort of um, develops a little bit. So it just goes like this. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> So the last guitar part is what I played on the chorus. Uh, the chorus chord changes are B minor seven, F sharp minor seven, C sharp minor seven, E minor seven. So I wanted to come up with something that was hooky, um, so I wasn't having to play the chords. Um, 
And I came up with this thing where I was doing unison bends and octaves. So my first finger is on the 14th fret of the high E string. And with my third finger, with the support of my second finger, I bend up the, the uh, 17th fret of the B string, up a tone like that, whilst I'm playing the 14th fret of the high E string. So yeah, I strike the strings like that. I'm muting the lower strings with my hand. That's the F sharp, which is the fifth of the B minor chord, B minor seven chord. And then I do the same thing. So it, I'm kind of doing a lot of unison bends. To, to sort of spell out the chord changes. So I get this over the B minor, and then over the F sharp minor seven, over the C sharp minor seven, and then over the E minor seven. Um, and they're all pushes. One, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, two, three, four. And that is what I'm doing to sort of get me through the chord changes. Um, I also put this little octave thing in the middle where I'm playing just an E octave like that. So that is the 14th fret of the D string with my first finger and the 17th fret of the B string with my fourth finger. And I'm fretting it so that my first and fourth fingers are pressing the string down. My first finger is muting the, the G in the middle. My fourth finger is muting the high E string. And I'm using my second and third fingers there to mute the, uh, the, the low E and the A. And as you can see, I'm only pressing down, I'm only pressing down when I'm striking. So it's a down up. So the whole pattern goes like this, two, three, four. So yeah, it, it does, it is quite tiring to play. You need a bit of strength in your fingers. Now I do know um, I got that from that double octave thing i think around that time there was a track on the radio which was a um i think it was a daft punk track um i think it was the music sounds better with you um so and that was a sample from that was taken off a shaka khan song they used that guitar part they took they'd taken that off a shaka khan track so at that time, a lot of people were using samples on tracks, but I wanted to sort of create my own hooky samples. Um, for anyone who's interested in how it was recorded, it was actually recorded using a Line 6 pod, one of the kidney-shaped, you know, that sort of red kidney bean-shaped um, guitar devices that used to be around. They probably start, still are around. Um, but I just had an amp setting on there, probably I think it was a deluxe setting a deluxe reverb setting on the on the line six um for the verse part i did have a cocked wah so the wah was just sat to to squeeze the frequencies into a certain place i wasn't wiring with my foot um, it was just cocked and, and left there to get that kind of real nasal sound um yeah so the, back when we were recording that track uh, you know i had to move quite quickly and we you know we weren't miking up amps it was just a lot of di and anything that was to hand so i could get the, the parts down quickly thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video uh please leave comments below if you feel like it um if you've got any questions either send them to my email which is in the description um if anyone would like to download the backing track so they can play along also, there's a link there in the description. Uh, just drop me a line and I'll get the track sent over to you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get an alert every time I release a new video.